Welcome to my channel. So this is gonna be my first video here on this channel and on booktube in general. So I've been reading for years. I've always loved uh, spending time reading. Um, so I finally decided to uh, step up and make a booktube account. And just as a quick introduction, my name is Sandra. I'm 30 years old. I live in Luxembourg, but I grew up in Belgium my whole life and I'm of African descent. I come from Rwanda. And also please don't mind my English. My <laughs> mother language is French, but English is like a second language to me. So I'm quite comfortable in it, but sometimes I think in French and then by the time it comes out of my mouth, it might not be accurate or correct. And also my accent obviously is not the best. So for my first video on my channel, I decided that it would be a nice idea for me to introduce you to other influencers that talk about books and with whom I share similar interests. So it's three ladies that I discovered here on YouTube. So I don't always agree with them. So on this list, you're going to see that there are some titles that I really didn't enjoy. Those are uh, books that are really popular on TikTok, on social media. And I wanted to hear your thoughts about them to see if I'm the only one who felt like this. So let's get started. And I'm going to have my phone here because I have a list of all the books and the talking points. Uh, sometimes I wanted to be reminded a little bit of the plot and to make sure that I don't forget anything. If it's a series and I feel like I can get more in-depth uh, and present the books better if I spend time uh, on an individual video for those books, that's what I'm gonna do. And so for those books, I'm not gonna dive too deep into it. So I'm gonna start with the first influencer. So I found her on YouTube. Her name is Jen. She's uh, the book refuge here on YouTube. So I'm gonna put a picture of her here. So she did a deep dive on Sophie Lark and our mafia books. So they're the brutal birthrights. Underworld series and Kingmakers and the funny thing is this series was recommended first to me by another youtuber that I'm gonna mention that is Loda's makeup but the one that really sold it to me was the book refuge because she covered all of the series and she also advised on the better order in which to read the book so basically Sophie Lark created this whole universe I can't even say that it's just a series like insane how she managed to form link between the different families and countries so you start by brutal birthrights and it's basically a series centered around the city of chicago if i'm correct and it's the polish mafia italian mafia and irish mafia that are spoken about in those books. So it started in Chicago and it starts with the first book who is gonna try to unite the Irish and the Italian uh, mafia because they have an ongoing conflict for years and the fathers finally uh, decided that they're gonna have an arranged marriage. So I'm not gonna go too deep into it because I believe that this is the type of series that they deserve a video on its own. So I'm gonna do a whole deep dive just like the book refuge did and i'm gonna present to you each book each couple which one is my favorite which one is my least favorite for the reading order that i would advise is to read the brutal birthrights somewhere in between you have to interject the underworld series which happens mostly in russia and then come back to kingmakers because kingmakers is gonna talk about the children from the previous books so for you to understand the whole plot and really enjoy kingmakers i would advise that you read first the brutal birthrights and then the underworld so that was the first uh recommendation from the book refuge and then she also did a deep dive on mafia romance and she mentioned the cora riley books so the cora riley books to be honest with you i read them before i saw the video of the book refuge so i cannot remember for the life of me if it was a recommendation from any other influencer i just know that i read the series and i went through them so quickly they are so bingeable you first have the bound by mafia books and it's centered around the cities of chicago and new york so you have the outfit uh, the chicago outfit and the familia familia i don't know how you pronounce that so those are the two mafia families that they talk about in those books uh so that's the first series and then you have the camorra chronicles and this is centered around the italian mafia situated in the city of las vegas which is also supposed to be the 
most violent one. In the Bound by Mafia series, you're gonna see that the Chicago family and the New York family are trying to make an alliance. You're gonna see in the Camorra Chronicles that there are also links that are gonna be created between the Las Vegas, for example, and the New York family. So it's not gonna be all black and white. And then you're gonna have Sin of the Fathers. So similarly to Kingmakers, gonna be talking about the, the children uh, that are from the couples of the previous book. So also for you to understand the whole plot and follow along, I would recommend that you first start by the Bound by Mafia series and that Camorra Chronicles and then Sin of the Fathers. And just like the Sophia Lark um, uh, books, I'm gonna do a deep dive on Cora Riley because there's like 12 or more books in all of those series. So I'm gonna go to the fictions that were, the fan fictions that were recommended by Jeff. She has a lot of video on fan fiction and I think she really enjoys them and give really good recommendation but I'm just gonna mention two that I really loved. The first one is Manacled and it was also recommended by Mike from AIDS Mike. Manacled is just such a beautiful story. I was so sad that San Liu which is the author of the book, will never be able to make money out of it because the story was so well written, super intelligent. And when you figure out the entire plot at the end, you're just left speechless, at least I was. So basically it's a story about Hermione and Draco. It's a mix, it's a cross between Harry Potter and the universe of the Handmaiden Tale, if you know about it. So basically you have Hermione who is becoming, who has, to be a handmaiden for Draco is the High Reef and it's in a setting where the Order of the Phoenix lost the war, Ari is dead and basically all of the members of the orders are either killed or you know used as like those servants uh, from male because Voldemort came with this breeding program uh, so basically Draco has to uh, have sex with Hermione and try his best to impregnate her. This book is split into three parts. You have the present time, the flashbacks in the middle, and then you go back to the present time at the end of the book. And I can't say too much because I don't want to give spoilers and I don't want to read the experience of the book for you, but this was so perfect. I cried so much while reading this book. You have some um, good people in this book that are trying to make it uh, so that Voldemort can be defeated. Um, so yeah just it was bittersweet for me to read it just wow it's a long one <laughs> it's a long one but you just fly through the pages i swear to god you don't even see the time flying by because the book is so enjoyable and for me to say that like i don't like those big romance book that you feel like it's a slow burn and nothing is happening so here it's also kind of a slow burn because the relationship has to be explained to you because Draco is such a jerk like at first when you first start reading the book uh, but yeah it's all worth it so the second one is a world not fit to live in uh, by Snowblind 12 and Lisa Dream and that one is also one with Hermione and Draco but there's also Lucius so it's kind of like a trio but not really it's also a setting where the Order of the Phoenix lost and Voldemort as the way to punish Hermione gives her as a sex slave to Draco and Lucius. There's this curse that is um, uh, invented by Snake. Once Hermione has been forced to have sexual relationship with Draco and Lucius, she's gonna be bound to them. So they will have to have sexual intercourse, I think every three to four days, which is gonna make it really difficult for her in the story and you're, and you'll understand why. At the end, she ended up with one of them. So that's why I'm saying it's not really a trio, but I'm not gonna say who and you're gonna have to figure that out for yourself. But it was also beautiful story although really sad like and so dark it was so like if you have triggers of rape and sexual assault i wouldn't recommend reading either one of those two fictions but most definitely a world not fit to live in because there's one scene in particular and the thing is the video from the book refuge she mentioned that one scene really traumatized her and i immediately know which scene she was referring to because when i read that part of the book i had to put it down for them it roughed me off so bad like i felt so bad for hermione and what was happening to her and her parents that i had to take a, a, a step back and i wanted to give up the book but i'm i can assure that you should keep going on just like the book Griffith said i think in her video she mentioned that she started thinking it was gonna be a two star it ended up being a five star so you can see that it was a rough start for her too but she ended up liking it just as i did so 
great recommendation from her she's into historical romance which oh my god i started my whole reading journey and my whole romance reading journey when i was a kid reading you know those historical books that had no sense so yeah just seeing that she like historical romance i was like Mwah! just this girl cannot get any more perfect the second one that i'm gonna mention is a girl that i enjoy so much because i don't know she's entertaining on top of having great recommendation she's entertaining she's so quirky and funny so i think you will enjoy her video even if you don't really have similar reading taste as her and what i love about her she doesn't stick to one genre she has recommendation about age gap about reverse harem about mafia sports book um dark romance everything so it's mickey from oh hates mickey uh here on youtube and like i said she also recommended my knuckle and she has a binded version which looks oh, i just wanna I, I have to go back to watch the video and see where she got it because that's the thing with fan fiction um the thing is me i don't have a lot of physical books because you know environment and all of that and i prefer the electronic um version of books like reading on kindle like i love it or sometimes even on my on my computer it's easier for me because i go through books so quickly but i know that if i can get some of the physical version of those books one of them would be manacled for sure so yeah so manacled was the first one and then she so what i love about mickey she made me read dark romance i used to swear up and down that i would never read dark romance because to me i was like romance is supposed to be light funny enjoyable so why would i read something that is dark triggering sad but she made me enjoy almost all of her recommendations um, i will mention one in particular that i think is one of her favorite and mickey please if you're watching this video don't be mad at me because i know it's gonna be one of your favorite that i'm gonna like criticize in a sense uh but it's really one of the few exceptions because most of them she's spot on with her recommendation so she recommended the mindfuck series and let me tell you i don't know what i was expecting for that series because it's so bingeable first of all each book is like 100 pages tops or 120 so between 80 to 120 pages it's like more it's more like novellas and it's five books and basically it's about lana who is a serial killer and the love interest is logan an fbi agent so when mickey presented that plot i was like this sounds like a disaster waiting to happen because to me it made no sense like in what kind of galaxy would you have an fbi agent falling for a serial killer because they're supposed to profile those people so he would know that she's messed up and he would know that she's the one because the worst thing is it's not just a random fbi agent is the one assigned to the case of lana so basically he's chasing her even though they both they both don't know when they meet so basically they meet in a cafe and lana immediately have a connection with logan they start interacting lana has a reasoning for why she kills and i used to think that those kind of justification would be stupid because killing is killing but in this sense i swear to god you're gonna end up rooting for her you're gonna end up willing for her to never be discovered and to go through with her revenge because what happened to her was so horrific so it's really triggering so i would say check the triggers for that uh, those books um because they are really twisted they're really really dark but at the same time they're so bingeable and so enjoyable the the one thing that i would say i saw a, a review by i think the tall book girl and she mentioned that to her the love story between Lana and Logan didn't make sense. It didn't really develop. And the only thing they did was having sexual relationship. And I'm, I kind of agree with her. But again, it's a series, so I'm not going to go too deep into the those books. I think I'm going to do a video just on them and explain why I feel that way. But other than that, it was still a really good series. And um, I enjoy it. And I, I think I would reread it, which is really rare for me. Then I'm gonna go to the one that I'm scared to mention, but I'm gonna mention it in between two good recommendations. It's the Devil's Night series and more specifically correct by Penelope Douglas. And I think it's also a favorite author, so I feel so bad for saying that. But I really didn't enjoy that book. Uh, I forced myself to finish because Mickey mentioned it in so many videos that I was like, I have to like it. I have to love this book. And the material is there. The Devil's Night series is about four friends. So you have Michael, Dean, 
uh, Kai and Will, and they are the four horsemen. They grew up together, so they just, you know, spend their whole life together and still in ad adulthood. Something happens that put, I think, Kai, Will, and Dean um, in prison, and not uh, Michael. Uh, but I can't really go into that as of why. Um, and so Michael is gonna try to avenge his friend against a girl called Erica, and they believe that Erica is the reason why the three guys went to jail. So the foundation for a great story was there, but I don't know, the story sometimes didn't make sense to me. Some of the things that they would do for revenge, so unbelievable. You know, those, you know romance books don't make sense. Like, I think we can all agree on that. But when it's to the point of you not even being able to immerse yourself in the story that's when i don't like books and this is something that happened at the end of the mind fox series but it wasn't as bothering me and it didn't prevent me from enjoying the book and finishing the series but corrupt i barely finished it and to be honest with you guys i'm not sure if i'm gonna finish the devil's night series i know that mickey said that the dean book one is the best i forgot the title sorry uh that dean story is really great um but i don't know guys it didn't click with me but now i'm gonna go with the books that i freaking love and that she recommended the first one is still beating and it's uh about cora and dean and basically they are kidnapped um by a serial killer and they are held captives and the serial killer make them do like awful things uh there's a a lot of trigger warning at the beginning of the book so check that to see if it's something that you can read basically this is a small part of the beginning of the book and then the rest is their recovery how are they gonna move past it so spoiler yeah uh, they manage to escape um, and then you're gonna see how they can heal and how a love story is gonna be formed between them and the kicker is Dean is somebody that Cora hates she hates him he's uh, i think her sister fiance at the beginning of the book so them having a love story was like something that i you couldn't even see happening at the beginning of the book but the way the love story evolved and the way their connection grew because of the experience and the trauma that they share was truly beautiful to see and what i liked is that it wasn't one of those predictable happy endings it really took time for them to build their relationship to build the trust to learn how not to be codependent on each other and i loved it because it wasn't always happy and i love when books are realistic that way um then i have untouchable by sam mariano and it's about zoe and carter and it's a bully romance this one really tugged to my heart because zoe basically um is a high school student and she decided to report an incident that happened and so as a revenge carter uh tries to there's a scene that i'm not gonna go into too deep because I don't want to give any spoilers but basically there's retaliation against Zoe from Carter and after that a love story is gonna evolve between them so it was really fascinating to me to see how she can go about hating her bully because what he did to her was horrible and then they developed this strong love relationship and there's also something that is revealed about Carter in the book that makes you kind of understand why he's acting that way and also Zoe she's not the typical heroine that had something traumatic happen to her and is like oh my god I'm gonna fix him she really tries to understand Carter's psyche and to see why he does what he does and what is the psychological aspect of his behavior and it's almost as if she's profiling him because in this book she has interest obviously in psychology and so it's really beautiful to see how she tries to understand him in a way so that their relationship can be built on stronger base if that makes sense so i really enjoyed it then there's truly by karma Rhodes. this one would be more like a four star but it's because some part of the story didn't make sense to me but other than that still a good book and it's about a girl called truly and um she's dating this guy named devin and he has a half brother named noah and basically at the beginning of the book i was gonna see the movie she breaks up no Devin breaks up with her and it's right when they graduate from high school they're supposed so her and her best friend Becca they're supposed to go on this road trip to follow the step of her mother so it's a way for her to connect with her mom 
make an experience that she also did and share some memories with her to go in the same cities, do the same activities. The kicker is Becca is dating this guy named Ethan and he is the best friend of Noah. There's an incident that happened between Noah and Truly after she is dumped by Devin um, at the beginning of the book. So it's also kind of a bully romance because Noah is does something horrible to Truly and then spends the rest of the book trying to make her fall in love with him because him and Ethan basically are gonna crash the road trip of the girls go on the road with them and Noah is determined to make Truly his girl and um, this is how their love story is gonna evolve and uh, I don't know it was a wild ride because to me when a guy does this to you there's no way that you should be falling in love with him it's the same as the story um between Carter and Zoe that I mentioned before but it made me like it even though it's something that I hate what happened at the beginning of the, those books for those girls but I still love the story and then she recommended one of the most twisted book I've read in my life and it's Ecstasy by KB Rose and it's between Zara and her boyfriend Alex and there's a little bit of Eli which is Alex's best friend uh, and roommate so it's like a trio but not really because at the end she ended up with only one of them uh, and it's so twisted guys it's not even dark in the sense of the typical dark romance but it's triggering for many reasons first of all Zara is addicted to drug um, so her life is a little bit wild even though she has a roommate and other people around her trying to look out for her and make her stop using drugs um, but basically she's dating this um, frat boy named Alex and he's always pushing her to her limits he does horrible stuff to her and she's intrigued by his roommate. The opposite of Alex is really calm and mysterious and a little bit a little bit dangerous. And he seems to treat Zara a little bit better than Alex. And I'm saying he seems <laughs> because you're gonna see in the book, but basically just read it. But it's really a good book uh, for a dark romance. She also then recommended the Briar You and Off Campus series by Elle Kennedy, and I think it's one of my most favorite sports series of all time and I don't even like hockey that much but those books were amazing and I'm gonna do a, a video just on them because they deserve a deep dive okay so the last influencer that I'm gonna mention is Loda's Makeup she does a series on advent calendars and those are exceptional by the way um, but you have to understand French in order to be able to enjoy them unless you just want to see the unboxing even though you don't understand her commentary that's why I started watching her video she's a beauty influencer beauty content creator and she started recommending board games and books in her favorites so I was like okay we have similar taste and I didn't expect that from her so she started by recommending the books in her monthly favorites so she has a section on beauty gadget and then books and now she's doing every two months I, I believe a recap of her reading because it I think it was such a success for her to recommend books that people ask her to do it more so now she's doing dedicated video just on books every two months and uh, because she has a certain amount of books that she wants to read per year and uh, so she in able to be able in order for her to be able to track that, I think it's easier if she makes video and she also has a very active Goodreads account. Um, so yeah, so that's how I discovered Lada's makeup. So her name is Laura and she's a French influencer. Um, so the first, I would say, author that I saw her recommend and that I love, there's not one book from that author that I didn't like so far, is Devne Perry. She writes by herself and sometimes in collaboration with uh, other authors and you know why I was surprised? She is a small town romance kind of girl, which is not me. I'm not the girl that was watching Gilmore Girls or Virgin Rivers, you know, those kind of shows that happen in the middle of nowhere. But she made me love it. Like Devna Perry, the way she writes it, you almost forget. And also the way she describes the cities, she really makes you involved. Because the way she does it is she has series. So she has The Edens, which is the series that was recommended by Bloodless Makeup. She, she also has the Lark uh, Cove series. And basically in all of those series, she always takes one city and she makes a romance based of, on an prominent characters of the city like the sheriff or the doctor or the lady op opening up a cafe you know and so all of those people 
have love story and it's they're all connected in the Edens, for example it's a um, series about siblings so it's six siblings and each one of them is getting a book and a love story and when you read uh, one book she's already introducing the other siblings and you can see their character development their their personalities and this is what i love about Daphne perry in her books it's not centered about the main couple she's always gonna involve you in the life of the town you're gonna feel like you're one of the citizens of the town and you it's gonna make you want to read the next book read the next love story sometimes it's completely like random character that you didn't expect were gonna be the next one in the series but she makes it so well when you pick up a series you don't want to put it down so yeah Daphne Perry it's really I'm, I'm gonna say one of my top five uh, romance author and I'm gonna do a whole video just on her and uh, because I believe that it would be way too short in this small video for me to properly introduce her and the next series recommended by Lotus Makeup was The Red Zone Rivals by uh, Candy Steiner and it's centered about football and I think I'm gonna leave this series for a video about uh, sport romance uh, but you have a bit of everything in this series you have the daughter of the coach um, the best friend sister you know all of the tropes that we love uh, that series was a solid five uh, star for me except the first book and it's funny because Lo does makeup explained in her video that she didn't like the first book that it was too much centered about around football and if you're not a football fan or a football fanatic and you don't know the terms and you don't know the stats and you don't know you know the specific of the sport it's gonna be boring for you and i completely agree with her like i loved the series but that first book was too much in too much football for me um so yeah that's the only one that i didn't enjoy as much as the other one but the series was still a five star for me then she recommended the love hypothesis by um ali as a wood and i loved it i didn't expect to like it because it's a story about olive who is a phd student and adam and basically olive um has a best friend and i think her best friend is dating her ex or something like that and she want to convince her best friend that she moved on and that she's okay and that she's not she doesn't have resentment or anything so one day she kisses the first boy she see with adam and uh is gonna they're gonna end up in a fake relationship uh so that olive can keep the appearances with her best friend so that she can keep dating that guy and i don't remember why it's beneficial to adam but it is and so this series is so funny because despite the fact that it has a scientific background and that i'm really bad at science i still managed to keep up with the book and it still was enjoyable for me then ali as a wood did a whole lot of books um that had kind of the similar a similar trope um and also love stories centered about scientists one thing that i hate about the rest of the book that she wrote is that even if the stories they always have great idea for the love story i feel like the way she described the male characters is always the same they have the same physical feature they have kind of the same um personality and same traits so i felt like i was reading the love story a love story with the same guy over and over again so that's the only thing that i didn't like but still a great author to me um then i have jennifer lynn barnes and the inheritance games so it's a young adult book which is not my favorite and the synopsis when Lotus makeup explained it i was like this sounds weird basically it's about avery and she's a young girl she's not particularly well off or anything i think you can even say that she's struggling financially and one day she receives a letter informing her that she basically inherited from this huge billionaire co called uh, tobias Hawthorne and she has to go to his estates and meet the family and be there for the basically the reading of the will and when she gets there she's surprised to hear that he basically left her almost everything and that man has a huge corporation and legacy that he's supposed to leave to his family because he has four grandson he has uh, uh from one of his daughter called sky and basically she had each one with a different father so they are half brother so you have uh jameson grayson alexander and nash the first book is in the inheritance game and then you have Oton legacy and the final gambit 
and I can't explain to you anything plot wise because I don't want to spoil it but basically it's gonna follow Avery uh, in her quest to discover why she was on his will why she, he left her so much and it's gonna be a bit of romance between her and two of the grandson it's Jameson and Grayson and you're gonna see which one she ends up with at the end of the series but this was fantastic Tobias left for her clues and enigmas for her to solve so that she can understand why he left her so much and why she was chosen because it seems that she was chosen at random at the beginning of the series but wow guys even though the romance wasn't my favorite because i don't like young adult romance it's always too you know too cheesy for me let's say but the books were amazing it's the perfect vacation book for me then she recommended a court of thorn and roses from sarah Jemas, which was such a huge hit all over social media so it's following uh Feyre, and basically at the beginning of a court of thorn and roses she accidentally not really accidentally she kills a fairy so basically it's a fantasy book and it's a world where human and fairies don't mix well and basically hum humans are really scared of fairies um, because they can easily overpower them and rule over them. She ventures into the forest because her family is really poor. She kills this big wolf and she realizes that he is a fairy. His name is Andres and one of Andres' friends called Tamlin, who is a high fae, comes a few days later to collect her and say that she has to be punished because it's against the law to kill a fairy. The alternative for her not to be executed is to follow him into Prithian, which is the fairy's world, I believe, and live in his estate. Basically, she will never be able to return to the human world or see her family ever uh, again. The rest of the book is how the story is gonna evolve between her and Tamlin and how she's gonna try her best to escape the fairy's world. So I'm not finished with the book, I'm actually listening to it. I have to say that the first, I would say, third of the book was hard for me because it's such like a jumble of description. It can get boring sometimes, but once you get into the mood, it's amazing. And I think the audiobook format is the best for you not to get overwhelmed. So I would recommend also trying to listen to it on uh, Audible if you can, because it's great and the narrator is amazing. Her voice is so soothing. The last book that she recommended is one that I didn't enjoy, which is weird because normally I love anything that Lost Lost Makeup recommends. The book is called Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score, and I think it's a whole series as well. And oh my god, like I wanted to like this book, but it's on my DNF. I hope that I can get back into it because I've saw some other reviews that really said only wonderful things about it. So I'm, ass I'm assuming that I will enjoy it if I try to put my heart into it. But man, it's a story about Naomi and she basically is coming to this small town, I forgot even the name of the town, uh, to have her sister because she uh, was contacted by her twin sister. When she gets into the town, her sister actually steals her car and money and flees the town and she realized that people in the town hate her sister and they don't give her the most warm welcome because of that and she ended up um, understanding why and some of the behaviors that her sister had. Uh, so she meets Knox and Knox is one of the thank president of the hate Tina club so he doesn't like her as soon as he sees Naomi because he believes that she's her twin sister and one thing that I forgot to, do to mention before Tina leaves town she leaves Naomi with her daughter called Wayla. I think she's like 11 years old so basically she has to find a way to take care of her niece and uh, start over in this small town where everybody hates her sister. So yeah, I was stuck in the beginning because to me it was so, so slow paced. Um, so I think I gave up when I was at like 20% of the book and also I hated the way Knox was behaving. And the problem is if I don't like the heroine or the hero of a book, I'm gonna have a hard time finishing because the basic of a romance is to like the main couple and in this instance i don't hopefully i can go back to the book because i hate putting books on dnf and i hate giving up i have this feeling of i gave up so those were the recommendations that i got from those three youtubers i would recommend you to check out their videos their channel i'm gonna link everything below so their channel and their goodread accounts if they have one 
and yeah i think you will enjoy them so for my first video here on booktube i wanted to present some of the youtubers that encouraged me uh of starting my own video and from launching myself on social media and starting to really share my passion of book with people because i read so many books per week so i can give you my own recommendation and so that you guys can see if we have similar interests besides the two books that i mentioned that i didn't like most of the books that i talked about in this video i loved so if you love those kind of uh, books please stick around so we can enjoy and talk about books even more so thank you for coming uh, welcome on my channel i hope it's gonna be an enjoyable journey together and i will see you in the next video bye oh, yeah.